We got the Chargers, who are currently favored by one point in Jacksonville to take on Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. It's an 8-15 kickoff on NBC. The over-under for this game is 47 points. Now, these two teams met in week three. The Jaguars, they beat the Chargers 38-10 to in that game. And in that matchup, Let's look at some of these numbers. For the Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence had a pretty good game in that matchup. Trevor Lawrence, he went, this was in week, week three. Okay, Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence, he went 28 of 39, 262 passing yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Zay Jones had 10 receptions, 85 receiving yards, one touchdown for the Jags. And Justin Herbert, he went 25 of 45, 297 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception in that game. And the Jaguars dominated the game from start to finish. They were up at the half. They were up 16 to 7 over the Chargers. Then the Jaguars, they outscored the Chargers 22 to 3 in the second half. So it was a dominating performance by the Jacksonville Jaguars. But at the time, the Chargers were dealing with a lot of injuries at that time. So, you know, that was the previous matchup between the two teams. Now, when I look at these two quarterbacks of these two football teams, let's start off with Justin Herbert. For the season, Justin Herbert, he has 25 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 4,739 passing yards. He's completed 68% of his passes. This is the first year where Justin Herbert led his team to the postseason. Coming into the season, the expectation for Justin Herbert was to get the L.A. Chargers to the playoffs. So I believe that Justin Herbert has already exceeded expectations this year. Let's not move the goalposts. All these other young quarterbacks like Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, they led their teams to the postseason before. Justin Herbert had not done that prior to this season. So we can't move the goalposts now. He got the Chargers to the playoffs. So now I believe Justin Herbert is playing with house money. And I believe that when you look at this Chargers offense and what they have for Justin Herbert, you got Austin Ekelar in the backfield. Ekelar, 204 carries, 915 rushing yards, 13 touchdowns this year. I love the job that he's done running the football and moving the chains for this Chargers offense. But I believe Ekelar has done a great job in the passing game for Justin Herbert this year. 107 receptions, 722 receiving yards, five touchdowns. So I believe he's been a nice target out of the backfield for Justin Herbert this season. But this receiving core for the Chargers, they can be dangerous if they're healthy. Mike Williams got injured in a Week 18 game against the Denver Broncos, and that's another thing. I don't understand for the life of me why the hell Brandon Staley had his starters playing in a, in a meaningless game against the Broncos in Week 18. Made no sense. Why the hell do you have Mike Williams out there and Joey Bosa out there? It made zero sense to me. I didn't understand that. I don't even understand why the hell Justin Herbert even played in that game. It's too much risk, too much that you can risk with injuries and guys getting stepped on and stuff like that. It made zero sense. But the reports that Mike Williams, he he is going to probably play in this game against the Jaguars. And he's been their best receiver in 13 games played this year. 63 receptions, 895 receiving yards, four touchdowns. I believe that Mike Williams is going to be a, a, a key target for Justin Herbert because he's a great red zone target. You know, Mike Williams, he is 6'4", so he's somebody that Herbert can throw the ball to when the Chargers get into the red zone. But we know that the number one receiver on this Chargers team is Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen is better than Mike Williams, but Mike Williams is having a better season. Keenan Allen this year, 
66 receptions, 752 receiving yards, four touchdowns. I think Keelan Allen is, is, is going to be called upon to step up in a major way in a passing game for the L.A. Chargers. Offensively, the Chargers, they're ranked 10th in the NFL in total yards average per game. They average 372 yards per game. They're ranked third in the NFL with 270 passing yards per game. And they are ranked eighth in the NFL, and they convert on 44% of their third down plays. So we know that this is a big play offense. They have the capabilities of being able to score with the Bills, with the Bengals, and with the Chiefs. The Chargers are definitely capable of being able to keep pace with those teams I just named. That's at the top of the AFC. Now, when I look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, I believe this year Trevor Lawrence has took some major, major steps, and he has progressed as a quarterback. I believe in his sophomore season, I've seen things out of Trevor Lawrence that makes me believe he's a franchise quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars moving forward. This year, Trevor Lawrence, 25 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 4,113 passing yards. He completed 66% of his passes this year. So I believe that Trevor Lawrence has proven to be a franchise quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars for future seasons to come. I, I really love the job that Trevor Lawrence has done this year as a quarterback leading this football team. But I don't believe Trevor Lawrence has his progress without a head coach the likes of Doug Peterson. I believe that Doug Peterson deserves to be the NFL Coach of the Year because last year Trevor Lawrence was a mess with Urban Meyer. This year with Doug Peterson, he has elevated his game to a point to where he's a franchise quarterback. The Jaguars won the AFC South and they get a chance to host the home playoff game. I don't believe it happens without Doug Peterson being the head coach of this football team. Uh, you got to remember, Doug Peterson, while he was the head coach in Philadelphia, he went 42, 37, and 1. So he won 53% of his games. The man won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles as his quarterback. He won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles. I don't believe he deserved to get fired in Philadelphia. I think Doug Peterson deserved to keep his job despite the 4 11 and 1 record that he had in 2020 with the Eagles. But Dougie P knows his football, and he is the primary reason why the Jaguars have turned around their season and now are hosting a home playoff game. He, you got to give him credit for it. They finished the season on a five-game winning streak, and they are now in prime position to definitely – win a playoff game and, and head on to the division round and we'll see what happens from there. Now, offensively for the Jaguars, they have Etonine Jr. in the backfield. Now, Etonine this year, 220 carries, 1,125 rushing yards, five touchdowns. He has that chemistry with Trevor Lawrence dating back to their days at Clemson. So I think he's going to be key for this Jaguars offense. E to nine is a major, major player that could have a major, major impact on whether or not the Jaguars can advance in the playoffs. So look out for E to nine. If you're a betting man or woman, he's a nice player on a player prompt to pick. Now you look at their receiving core. They brought in Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk this year, 84 receptions, 1,108 re receiving yards, eight touchdowns. And they got Zay Jones. Zay Jones, 82 receptions, 823 receiving yards, five, touch, five touchdowns. So those are their two primary receivers. I think they're, they are decent. I don't think they're great as Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are, but they are decent, and I think they can make plays in the passing game for this Jacksonville Jaguars football team. You look at the Jaguars overall, 
offensively. They averaged 369 total yards per game. That's ranked 11th in the NFL. They averaged 233 passing yards per game. That's ranked 10th in the NFL. And they convert on 42% of their third down plays. That's ranked ninth in the NFL. So this Jaguars offense is, I would say, average to good. Not great like the Bills, Bengals, or Chiefs, but they're average to good. So this, this is going to be a good game. I, these two quarterbacks, this is their first playoff games. This is Justin Herbert's first playoff game of his career. And this is Trevor Lawrence's first playoff game, obviously, of his career. Now, Trevor Lawrence has played in a lot of big games dating back to his days at Clemson with Dabo Sweeney. So I'm not sure which quarterback has the advantage. I like both of these quarterbacks in Herbert and Lawrence, but in the playoffs, backsides get tight and palms get sweaty. And we get a chance to see who is the real in big moments in the playoffs. So I'm excited about that when it comes to these two teams and their respective quarterbacks. Now, defensively, the Chargers, they got Joey Bosa. They got Derwin James as well. Those are two players who can have a major, major impact defensively for the L.A. Chargers. I thought last week the Jaguars, their defense, they didn't do very well um, against the pass and against the run against that Tennessee Titans offense because the Titans offensively, all they had was Derrick Henry. I mean, I mean, all they had was Derrick Henry. Joshua Dobbs, give me a break. But they allowed Joshua Dobbs to have 179 passing yards. I didn't even think he was good enough to even get 150 passing yards, let alone 179. So this Jaguars defense, they, they got some work to do. They got, they definitely have some work to do. And defensively, they are led by defensive coordinator Mike Caldwell. That's their defensive coordinator. So. He's going to have to definitely put together a nice game plan to try and slow down Justin Herbert and his high-powered Chargers offense. But with all that being said, it's prediction time on the Wise Guys Sports Show. I believe that the Chargers are a slightly better football team than the Jaguars are. I believe Justin Herbert is better than Trevor Lawrence is, and I believe that the Chargers are the sleepers in the AFC, and in the entire NFL playoff picture. I'm rolling with the L.A. Chargers to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going Justin Herbert, 31, Trevor Lawrence, 24. I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair in Jacksonville, and I think both of these quarterbacks will play well, but I believe Justin Herbert will outlast Trevor Lawrence. Everybody go and follow Wise Guys on Twitter at WiseGuys underscore H. Also on Facebook, Wise Guys. And be sure to follow Wise Guys on Instagram at These Guys No Sports.